Hey guys, welcome back to another video for DKCGI.net. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how we can model a motorcycle chain within 3ds Max. First things first, whenever you're starting to model something, the first thing you're going to need to um, get is proper reference images. For example, because I want to do this chain right now, I went ahead and just googled around for a few images and, well, here is a pretty decent one where it's basically showing you three kinds of chains. Like you can see that uh, even though they are very similar, they have difference in their size and pretty much that's it. Nothing uh, that would distinguish them, distinguish them more from each other except the, the size of the links. Now this size is basically where the sprocket is going to go in. So depending on the difference or actually depending on the distance from one to another, it's going to define the size of the sprocket. In our uh, situation, we're actually going to have to try and, well, basically break this down into multiple smaller parts. So I went ahead and with my amazing drawing skills, I basically just did this. Okay, I went ahead and just did this. I broke it down into f uh, five pieces. As we can see, actually four pieces. The first one would be this piece over here at the end. And then comes in the middle piece that basically goes from one side to the other, followed by the third piece, which is in between the uh, two middle links. So we can see that we have four individual pieces that we want to model out. So knowing this, let's jump back into uh, Max and start modeling it out. All right, let's start right here. I'm gonna go into the front view, viewport, and well, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with a simple circle. All right, I'm gonna just create one over here and I'm gonna give it a radius of one centimeter. There we go. We have a simple circle. I'm going to just put it down to zero, zero, zero. There we go. Now, seeing as how it's going to be easier for me to manage this model, if it's low poly, then I'm just going to go into interpolation tab and lower the step paths. So I'm going to go some to down to something like here. There we go. One step. So the next thing I'm going to do is make a copy. So I'm going to select the circle and go control w uh, control v i'm just gonna clone it make a copy here we go and now i have the circle uh, o2 selected basically a copy and i'm gonna move it on the x axis i'm gonna move it for uh, three centimeters yeah yeah that's fine and since we have them both done i'm gonna convert them to a spline and seeing as how I want them to be this, a single um, spline, I'm going to attach them both. There you go. Now, like this, I can do pretty much uh, anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to convert it into an edible poly. There you go. Now we got two, two of them like this. Now, I want to go ahead, select both of these edges and go bridge same goes with these two bridge this way i basically uh just made the first one like this part over here like for example if we take a look on the other image we can see that this pretty much resembles that uh form now all we got to do is just do a little bit of refinement to it all right back to it so first of all I'm going to select both of these and do an inset on them with an inset I'm, I can pretty much define how big the hole is going to be let's say 0 0.6 centimeters okay and just go ahead and delete this there we go we deleted it and this is what we get right now 
I should probably press J so I can get rid of the these annoying selection brackets. Press G, remove the grid, and F4 to see the edges. There we go. Now, before we do anything else, I want to add some extra support edges because I'm going to be using Turbo Smooth to smooth this all out. So I'm going to select this edge and this. Oh, better, no, no. Better yet, I can just go ahead and split this in the middle. So I'm going to go connect with one zero zero, and now I can simply delete half of this. So I don't have to do it uh, twice. Just delete half. I'm going to work with a symmetry later on. So select the edge, go a full ring like this. Then go do a connect with two segments and just pinch them away from each other up to like something, well, something like 85. This would work just great. There we go. Now we have this. And what we want to do right now is uh, make this transition so that uh, this line actually has a support edge. As you can see, this line went down downwards which we really don't need uh, need this to support right here so i can just simply go ahead and delete this but before we delete both of these i'm gonna go ahead and do a simple cut so i'm gonna go cut and cut from here to the end right here and do another cut over here there we go. Now, since we have that done, I can just go ahead, select this entire line, right, this right here, and this part right here, and go control backspace. That way I remove the lines alongside with the vertices that were with it. So with that, I can proceed into modeling out the rest of this part in 3d so in order to make it 2d plane three uh, three dimensional I can either go ahead with an extrude or simply toss on a shell modifier I'm gonna go with the shell and here I'm going to choose what well, that's one centimeter is too much so 0 0.3 maybe let's see how mm, yeah this is actually gonna work 0 0.3 there we go looks good there we go both sides have that awesome all right in order to continue modeling i'm going to toss on an edit poly modifier uh just as a clarification in case you don't have these buttons over here uh, you can just simply go ahead click configure modifier sets then go in to configure modifier sets and right here you can just uh, drop in the amount of buttons you want to have over there like as you can see I've put in eight for me and simply when uh, go into the modifiers and drag drop whatever you want to have in those two uh, in those eight uh, buttons all right so we have added poly back I'm gonna go select the edge select one of these edges do a ring selection or alt R and now as we can see we have the selection going all over so go another connect two segments pinch them from each other let's say 80 there we go it is good and since we have that done the only thing that's left is the inner part of this uh here piece so again go connect two pieces 80 zero done so far we have half of this done so if i toss in a turbo smooth it's gonna look well decent that's with one literation if i go in two iterations it's getting even better turn on iso line display there we go it looks nice so we have half of it done already so let's go ahead drop the turbo smooth and i'm going to go ahead select both of these polygons press grow once so I get the adjacent uh, polygons and delete them there you go now I want to put a symmetry modifier so we can mirror it on the other side 
before I do that though, I'm gonna have to select my uh, pivot and basically put it at the edge. So I'm gonna click, uh, going to click the Affect Pivot Only button. There we go. We can see these arrows uh, that are just bolded out. And now if I wanna try and move it uh, uh, out, I wanna snap it to this ver vertex over here. In order to be able to snap it, I need to turn on Snap Toggle. So right click on Snap Toggle, turn on Vertex. Make sure you t turn off everything else as we don't want uh, our uh, pivot to basically snap to anything else except vertices. So turn on Snap by either clicking the S button or clicking on the snaps. And now go ahead and simply drag it to this vertex over here. Turn off effect pivot only. And now we have our pivot right at the edge. So going back into our modify tab, I'm gonna drop a symmetry modifier on top of it. Right now we don't have anything, but we just click the flip button and there we go. We have our piece done. If, if you actually get something like this, that's basically because your threshold of your symmetry is too high. So drop it down to 0 0.01 and there we go, no problem. Now in order to clean this up, as we don't need this extra edge, drop another edit poly on top of it, select this inner edge, double click or uh, loop, loop it, and again, control backspace to delete it. And there we go. Now if we turn on turbo smooth, we have a decent end part. Now, let's go ahead and before we do this, I'm actually going to take this entire piece and clone it once. So I'm going to hold down shift and just drag it. There we go. Up until like over here. And I don't want an instance, I want a simple copy. There we go. Now, why am I making this a copy and what am I supposed to do with this? Well, basically the idea is to have one of these pieces, as you can see over here, be with a smaller hole like here while the other one basically has a cylinder next to it so I can either try and get away with this the way that I actually make the centerpiece one uh, cylinder that's kind of extruded and going through this or I can make the cylinder a separate element in this case we're gonna go ahead and make it a separate element so as I have this selected, uh, I have basically both of these. I want to make sure that I have something that goes through the center and kind of um, goes ahead and makes them one. What I mean by this is simple. We need to make that part right, right here, this one. Now, if I'm going to use this model for a close-up and I'm going to have to like let's say disassemble it, I would incorporate this uh, extrusion, like inwards extrusion, but in our case, it's not going to be visible, so we can go ahead and get away with just a simple cylinder. So, for this example, I'm simply gonna go and make a line. For right here, make a line, hold down shift, to make it a straight line, click, deselect. Go into rendering and turn on enable in renderer, enable in viewport. Now, with this selected, I can just try and align it right here. And, you know, it's aligned on the X, aligned on the Y. So all I gotta do right now is make the radius smaller. So I'm gonna try 65 instead of 12 sides we're gonna go ahead and try 24 to get a better run there we go there we go we got this entire line done so go and drop an edit poly on it so it's no longer a line but it's basically a geometry every time you use a, a line or a spline to get geometry it's pretty much there's a pretty good chance or actually it's almost always you're gonna get these two lines 
at the end. So go ahead, select them, control backspace and delete them out. All right, we have this. So if we go ahead, turn on the turbo smooth, we're gonna see they kind of fit into each other quite well. So take this part again and simply drag it up with a shift, holding down shift, make a copy. In the front viewport, simply just align it wherever you want it to be. And now take this part, drag it down closer. Now here's the tricky part. You have to make uh, take this part over here, the second one, and just move it outwards like this up until it gets to this position like this now with this done we have the out uh, the outer part we have the inner part the only thing that we're actually missing right now is that cylinder in between them like basically what I'm talking about is this one we only need this cylinder and as I said previously, uh, this can be a different width depending on the sprocket you want to use. So for this example, we're just gonna go ahead and manually strike out a size for it. The easiest way would be go ahead, select with a connect, then slide it downwards till the edge over here. As you can see the line. Go ahead and say OK to that. And now select all of these polygons and go and do a detach. Make a, sure it's detached as a clone. Mid part, name it mid part, not mart, part 01. Say OK. With that selected, we're going to go ahead isolate this I don't need this line anymore go back now select the mid part thing and do a shell on it again we're gonna get a shell with a width of 0 0.3 which kind of looks good kind of looks decent it fits in so the only thing that I need to do right now is make sure that the length is kind of okay for whatever I'm doing so if I go and scale it down there we go. Uh, something like this all right we're going to go, go ahead and apply a simple v-ray material to everything so i'm just going to have simple v-ray nothing else so select everything apply the v-ray material there you go in case you don't have V-Ray or you don't use V-Ray, you can apply any uh, material. Like the standard one would work just fine. I'm just putting it so I can see better. Yeah. Two iterations. We have the mid part. So the only thing I need right now is these two parts on the other side. All right, so I'm going to select them both. Click the mirror. And I want to mirror them on the Y axis, as you can see right here. So go Y, do a copy, click OK. Move them out a bit, right up until here. And just locate them wherever I want. There we go. And that is going to work just good. And these, both of these, just move them slightly here. There we go. So basically, what we have right now is our base for the chain. This right here is exactly what we need. Why? Well, there are two different different ways that we can make a chain, and both of these are uh, both of these two uh, actions are actually going to require us to have a base that we can clone or copy in order to achieve the uh, result we want. So in, before I proceed, I'm going to take one of this, uh, these parts, go right click, convert to edible poly, and now attach them all together. So they form one, there we go, 
I actually missed one right here. There we go. Now, all of it is simply one model. I'm going to affect the pivot and center it to object there you go, like this. So, now here's the interesting part. There are two different ways that you can actually do this. First would be that we're going to have to make sure we have some kind of a line so we can draw out uh, basically a path in which this part is going to move or uh, the path in which our chain is going to be in. So I'm going to draw out a single line. In case you don't know how I'm uh, just um, going ahead in uh, dropping in a line when I right click is simply because I'm holding down control. As you can see that uh, whenever you're just uh, right clicking you get one menu. When you go uh, control right click you get a different menu. Shift click gives you a different one. Alt is a different one. So whenever you want to create something hold down control right click go into line and just draw out a line in which you basically want to see your chain be uh, like something like this now seeing as how I used a line in order to get the middle part I'm having I'm getting a geometry on drawing out the line so I'm gonna go, go ahead and simply turn off enabling render it enabling viewport now I'm gonna press 1 so I can get into the vertex selection mode select all the vertices except the end ones so right click and go smooth this way I'm getting a smooth transition between the vertices since this is done now comes the interesting part I'm going to select the main um, part or let's just name it um, well chain chain link 01 there you go chain link 01 move this aside and with the chain link selected the first way that we can do this is by going in our tools go into well actually no hmm there we go spacing tool or just pressing shift i with this we can basically just take a path or pick a path in which we're going to get our original uh, geometry to either follow like here like click follow and now we can simply put in the number of copies we want to have in that follow so for this example, if I drop down to, let's say, 34, it kind of falls in into place. And we get a chain. Actually, it's a quite, uh, quite decent chain. But we're going to see the problem uh, with taking this approach right now. For example, I'm going to select the line and see it right here. As we can see, the line is kind of flowing, but, well, the parts are simply not going one into the other. Right here, you can see that some breakage. Here, it's very apparent. We're getting a, a different breakage. So, we took the original part, but, well, it kind of duplicated it, but it didn't do the job well, because we have a lot of breakages, a lot of broken links. So... I'm going to go ahead and select the line, take it away. All of the all of these links, as I don't need them, I'm going to delete them and get back the line. Now, here is the other way that you can do this. So, I just saw that when I duplicated it, when it went down to like 34 uh, copies it was enough so for my case I'm simply just gonna hold down shift and move it in the x-axis until it kind of gets into place right about here we had 34 copies previously again I'm gonna drop down 34 copies click OK 
we're gonna have to wait a second there we go now we got a straight line in that straight line we have 34 copies of our given there we go chain I selected them all and pressed I pressed alt Q to isolate them in order uh, so I can better attach them all as I want them all to be one continuous geometry so select one of the links go into the settings list next to attach and basically just select all the chain links there we go Shift, click attach and now the whole link is one big chain we got 34 now here is the chain here's the line that we want our chain to move in here is the easy way you go ahead inside the modifier list and from here you need to find a modifier called path deform now there are two path deforms one is a world space modifier the other one is an object space modifier for this one we're going to go ahead and try first we're going to try the path deform with the world space modifier or the one that has wsm next to it click on it now in here you have a simple parameters we can just pick a path i'm going to pick this path and i just need to try and get the path deform axis and from what i can see right here it doesn't look like it's the x is it y nope is that no nope. so i'm guessing it's the x but the percentage it's probably not right all right so that means it's not the path deform of the wsm so we're gonna go ahead and drop down to path deform that should be right here pick a path again now we can see the path over here just go ahead y and there we go now on the y we got the chain deforming as we want it without getting any breakage so we have the chain working just good now the only thing that i want to mention uh here is that when you're doing this with the path deform there's a chance that if you have your line set up uh with kind of sharp uh edges or edges where the turn is basically just uh takes too uh, too sharp of a turn you're gonna get a bit of a squish in your model what i mean by this if you yeah here we go right here this is what i'm talking about this part of the link is basically squished while this one is stretched the reason for this is basically because uh if we take a look at this line and all right i don't have complete control over the vertices but if i select them and go ahead and turn them into busy corners there you go now it's even more apparent as you can see these parts over here are uh, str uh, squished some are stretched which is not exactly what we want to do but have no fear there is a very easy way to fix this and that's by going to the modifier list again but this time around we want to make sure we select our line so this line is basically the path that uh, our chain is going to take so we're going to select the line then go ahead and in the modifier list find a modifier called normalize spline there you go normalize spline when you apply it the first thing you're going to notice is all your uh, chain links are kind of looking good now why well as you can see right here you have simple one simple parameter to set up and that says segment length uh, actually we still have this problem right here so if we reduce the segment length to let's say one 
There we go. We no longer have that problem. But why? What actually happened? Well, if you go ahead and convert this line into an edible spline right now, you're going to see that by using a normalized spline, we've added a single vertex on every centimeter or uh, every centimeter was basically subdivided so we have a lot more uh, geometry in or a lot more information in which the geometry can follow that resulted in us getting a really better looking mesh if we put it around here we're gonna see that the chain on the ground right now is looking much better the flow is going better and we don't we don't have breakage or shrinkage of some of the uh, parts now in case you get something like this we still don't want it to be like this because it doesn't uh, look natural you won't see the chain bending like this in this case the only thing you can do is try and uh, elevate this stress right here you just need to move around these uh, vertices which would be even easier if you do it prior the normalized spline so we don't end up with uh, issues like this so that would be it for uh, how to model a motorcycle chain or motorbike chain and by using this simple technique uh, where you're combining the path deform with the normalized spline you can pretty much accomplish a lot of um, well, you can build a lot of the models that require something like this where you have one shape that's repeating itself multiple times so thank you for watching and see you next time